Is this the best new action camera communicator combination for motovloggers? Or is it just more the same? Well, let's check it out. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Man's Reviews. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing video and taking a look at the brand new Cena 50C. I got my hands on one. Cena sent me the I said Cena, I didn't. I, I it's an old habit. Cena sent me one of these. I want to thank them for that. And I also wanted to let you know this video is not sponsored by Cena. They're not paying me to do this video, but they did send me this pre-production 50C to take a look at and to review and to talk to you about. But let's take a look inside the box. Before we do, I'm really excited to take a look at this. But before we do, I want to remind you, if you're passionate about motorcycles and you love riding on two wheels, please take a second to click that subscribe button down below here somewhere. And don't forget to click that notification bell so that YouTube can remind you and let you know when we come out with brand new videos. Once again, Senna has very nice packaging. This is the 50C, of course. Okay, this here is the communicator itself. And uh, when I first pick it up out of the package, it feels pretty substantial. And this, I, I'm not sure if this is going to replace the current 10C Evo, or if it's in addition to, I'm not sure yet. I have not heard officially what, what the plans are. And let's take a look underneath here. I believe we have a box that's going to have a bunch of goodies in it. Looks like we have a, an owner's manual down here. So let me unpack all this stuff and we'll uh, take a look at what's inside. also point out that this system uh, it has the sound by Harman Kardon that's one of the differences and it's actually stamped on these two mounts here so I assume that means the speakers are Harman Kardon and the microphone actually does look a little different than Senna's other boom mic that I've seen first we have the speakers these are the uh, high, de I think they refer to them as high definition Harden Carden, Harman Carden speakers that go in the helmet. There is a single plug here and another little plug that I think goes to the microphone. You have the firmware updating via Wi Fi. I can't remember what they call this right off the top of my head. I'll put it on the screen. But it's the, the, uh, the way that you can update the firmware on the camera if you don't have a computer available to you. We also get a boom microphone, which looks quite a bit more substantial than what I recall seeing on other Cena products. So maybe that's part of the Harman Kardon experience. It has uh, a little bit more of a, just a little bit more substantial looking microphone. You also get a microphone for use with a full face helmet which is like a little stick-on Velcro microphone that would fit on the inside of your chin mount. Uh, we have a couple of uh, Velcro spacers for your speakers, little standoffs to make the uh, speakers closer to your ears if you need that. We have some foam to go on the end of the microphone. And we have three different mounting systems. You have one that I think is kind of the top of the line. It's the gear. I think they call this the gear mount and uses a couple of Allen bolts that mount on the end. This clip mounts on the inside of the helmet. And this particular mount allows you to adjust uh, qu quite a bit of range. You can adjust the rotation of the camera. Uh, you can also uh, make some other adjustments to the camera. So I think this is kind of what I would consider to be more the high-end, top-of-the-line mounting system. This one can be adjusted too, but basically you adjust it just by slipping it around on the helmet. It doesn't have that separate little gear. There's also a stick-on mount so that you have uh, like the 3M adhesive if you have the type of helmet uh, where you simply can't mount one of these. 
uh, you can always go with this uh, adhesive mount, and it has kind of a curve to it to fit the curve of a helmet. And then you have various uh, Velcro mount pads here with 3M backing, and then, of course, the unit itself and some manuals. Now, the unit itself, let me get all this stuff off to the side, and let's focus on the unit itself. This is the 50C. Uh, it's nice looking. It looks very similar to the 50S. If you see, this is the 50S. You can see the similarity. They both have the same style jog dial. They both have the antenna that pops up. This is the mesh antenna. This one has the mesh antenna also. You kind of push on this one to get it up. Then the mesh uh, recording or mesh on off button is right kind of toward behind that antenna. It's easy to get to if the antenna is up. Okay, and then we can compare it to the 10C Evo. It has more of a stubby built-in antenna. It doesn't have a pop-up antenna. And just looking at the ergonomics, you can see that the 50C is larger in size than the 10C Evo. It's just a little bit bulkier. It feels a little heavier. Not a lot heavier, but a little bit heavier. It has the same style port or similar, I don't know if it's exact same, but I think it is the same style port where your speakers and your microphone plug into. It also has the phone button on the back. One difference though is there is a camera button on the bottom of the 50C and there's not a camera button on the bottom. I believe the camera button is on the top on the 10C Evo. They both have a jog dial, even though this one is more in the style of the 50S, and they both have the button on the jog dial where you can press in to do certain functions. This 10C Evo has a micro USB charging port, whereas the 50C has the much more desirable USB-C charging port. And I believe that's going to allow for faster charging and I like it because it's just more universal. The only thing is they don't give you a USB-C cable for charging. So you, you will need to have a USB-C cable uh, if you plan to charge it. But everybody's pretty much got a USB-C cable laying around somewhere. Let's talk about the similarities between these two cameras. Because as I started going through the documentation and the specs... My first question was, what is the real difference between these two cameras? And honestly, other than some of the physical characteristics of the body, I don't know what the differences are. They both have similar specifications or virtually identical specifications. They can both record in 1080p 30 frames per second or 1080p 60 frames per second. They can both record in 1440 or 2K at 30 frames per second, and they can both record in 4K at 30 frames per second. So Senna did not give us any additional uh, resolutions in the 50C than there is in the 10C Evo. I'm going with the 10C Evo. They also both use a micro USB card up to 128 gigabytes. And from what I could tell from the two manuals, the recording times are the same. Uh, they both require a U3 or greater micro SD card. Both cameras have loop recording, which is, by the way, much nicer than the loop recording on the GoPro. What are the differences between these two cameras? Because we can already see there's a lot of similarities here. What are you getting in this 50C that you're not getting in the 10C Evo? The 50C has USB-C charging, which we mentioned earlier, compared to micro USB, which to me, that's much more preferred. But the biggest advantage and the biggest difference between these two camera communicators is the fact that the 50C has Mesh 2.0 and Open Mesh. If you remember my review of the 50S, and if you haven't seen that or if you've forgotten it and you're not familiar with Mesh 2.0 or Open Mesh, 
go back and watch my video review of the 50S. I'll put a link to it in the, des in the description of this video and up above. But basically, it is, in my opinion, a superior way of group ride communications because it no longer requires that you manually pair these headsets to each other. So if you have other riders in your group that have a 50S or a 50R or even a Spider ST1 or the 50C, they should be able to communicate in this open mesh environment seamlessly. And it allows up to what Senna claims is virtually an unlimited number of riders in a group, which of course is unreasonable to assume it'd be unlimited. But you don't have those limitations that you have with other mesh systems. So, or with Bluetooth. And it is different. It works differently than just communicating with Bluetooth. And this one can com communicate with, say, a 10C Evo, which is a Bluetooth communicator. And you can bridge between these communicators. So if you have an open mesh environment or a mesh environment, uh, you can still bring in a Bluetooth communicator. My only concern, because I have not used this yet, I haven't installed it on my helmet, haven't, haven't played with it yet. I don't know if this has the same chipset and firmware as the 50S. The reason is because the 50S works beautifully with my Honda Goldwing. Now, Again, I'm talking from the perspective of a Honda Goldwing owner, a 2018 plus. If you ride a BMW or a Harley or an Indian or any other motorcycle, Ducati, any other motorcycle that has an audio system that will connect to a Bluetooth communicator, I'm not speaking to that right now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug this into this Wi-Fi adapter and we're going to see if we can't update the firmware to the latest version of this firmware. I've just recently updated the firmware on my 50S. So let's get the new firmware updated on this. We're going to mount it on my HJC IS Max 2. Big test for me is to pair this with my Honda Goldwing. I'll also pair it to my Garmin GPS. So let's go out and uh, mount it up and update the firmware and get started, then let's go to the garage. And you can see here, I actually carved out some of this styrofoam uh, liner. I did that because uh, it makes the speakers fit a little better. I can adjust them a little bit higher up if I need to. Now, if we look at the left side of the helmet, you can see I've already got a piece of Velcro here for the boom mic. That's because I previously tested the 50R, which has the same kind of a Velcro attached boom mic. So I left that in place and I will use that for this new boom mic, which attaches the same way. So if you don't have either of these in your helmet, you would need to put that velcro pad uh in the in, you know in the ear socket or the head uh, earphone speaker socket hole right there on your helmet okay i'm going to put the new speaker in i'm going to have this wire kind of i'm going to have it go around the outside or the rear i should say of this little snap here and i'm just going to have that one go straight down like this actually no i'm going to change that. I'm going to have it go back as well because it's going to go underneath this little head liner. Now we're back working on the left side and I'm just working on a towel, a bath towel here. Just keep the helmet from scratching up the table. And Now we're going to install the boom mic. it about right there you can move it up on this pad there's a hook and loop fastener here i can always unhook it and slide it up if i need to to get it farther away or closer to my mouth so we'll do it right there and then i'm going to put another hook and loop on this little piece of plastic right here to hold this guide in place something like this and then I'm just going to tack this down like that. 
Now let's install the uh, clamp. We're going to, I'm going to use this one here, which has the little gear, the little, like, I think they call it a gear clamp. And it's just going to slip in between this right here and sit about like that right there, if I remember correctly. And I like to tighten this down pretty tight so it's really secure. That's pretty tight. That's on there pretty good. This is the cable that goes to our microphone or goes in between the boom mic and the headset. And there are little arrows. You can see how it goes. There's a little marker here that goes in this hole, I believe. No, actually, it goes on the other side. So let's do it like this, I think. Yeah, just like that. Now we can put our ear pads back in. Gear clamp installed. And with this little gear loosened up, you can turn this mount and angle it with quite a bit of a degree of, of flexibility. So I'm going to go ahead and put the camera on there or the uh, 50C. We'll slip it on. I'm just guessing right now at to what angle I want because I can move this camera to a variety of angles based on, you know, which way my head is. And I think my head is normally about like this on the helmet. So I'm going to angle this up a little bit like that. And now all I have to do is tighten down that gear. Yeah, slip this off. Now when I tighten up that gear, it's going to hold this plate in place. And now when I slip the camera on, and if I put the helmet on, I should be aimed pretty much straight ahead. It might be going down a little. We'll find out when I test it. And then all we have to do is take our plug here, and it just goes right into this port. And then we lock it down like that. And in fact, today I have two cameras. Not only do I have my uh, trusty GoPro Hero 10 Black, which is mounted to the front of my helmet, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But I also am testing out the Senna 50C combination Bluetooth communicator and action camera. And I will be switching between the two views during this ride so that you can see and compare how this Senna performs both with video and with audio because I am recording my audio to the Senna and the GoPro. After 0.2 miles turn left towards W Hebron Parkway. Okay, there you can see we're getting some uh, audio through the Senna headset for the navigation on this uh, BMW. Senna 50C has the Mesh 2.0 communicator, Bluetooth, or actually it's their Mesh technology. But where this communicator really shines, it's along the same lines as the Senna 50, 50S or the 50R. It has that same Mesh technology, so you can use open mesh. And I've done a couple of simple tests with it. I can't tell any difference between it and the 50S. So I think from the Bluetooth headset communication ability, it's the same, no better, no worse than a 50S, which is very good. Now when it comes to connecting this headset to your motorcycle's audio system, I found it to be extremely reliable with this BMW. It connects every time. It has not failed one time to connect to the BMW audio system. It has failed to connect to the Honda Goldwing audio system. I would say 50% of the time it will require that you reboot the headset to get it to connect. It will connect, 
uh, but sometimes it doesn't connect the first time. It, uh, you start the bike, you turn on the headset, or vice versa. It doesn't matter which, which order you do it in. So now we're going to compare the video capabilities of this Cine 50C. This is the Cine 50C you're looking at right now on video. And one thing you'll notice is the video is pretty bouncy. That means it does not have the same kind of image stabilization as you would find in the GoPro Hero 10 or any of the GoPro cameras for that matter. You'll also notice the colors on the GoPro are more vivid. Uh, the blues are a deeper blue. Now, this is kind of inherent to a GoPro. Now let's look at these two cameras side by side, and I think you'll be able to notice the difference both in the colors and in the image stabilization. There seems to be a little more distortion in the Senna image. Notice that light post on the left as we go by. You'll notice it's leaning more on the Cine 50C than it is on the GoPro. Now some of these things can be corrected uh, in your editing software such as image stabilization. You can add in some image stabilization um, and you can also do some color grading to bring the colors coming out of the Cine uh, closer to the GoPro. Here I'll apply a little color grading so you can see the difference. This is what it looks like out of the camera and now it will slowly begin to grade. You can see those blue skies are a little bit closer to the colors coming out of the GoPro. So let's go back to the studio and I'm going to give you my final opinion on this Cine 50C. So I've ridden with this Cine 50C now for probably about a month or more. I had this camera actually before it was released to the public. It is, it is a pre-release version, but I think it's pretty much the final uh, shipping version of the camera and the communicator. I've kind of split up my pros and cons here, and I really kind of debated, do I want to go through the positive stuff first or do I want to go through the negative stuff first? Things I like, things I don't like. And who do I think this is a good solution for? Okay, so I'm just going to go through the, the, the good stuff first. And it's mostly good because this is a very, very nice piece of equipment. And the first thing is I'll say it, it's nice to have an integrated camera and communicator all in one nice compact design uh, as opposed to and I'm comparing this to the idea of having a separate Bluetooth communicator and maybe using something like a GoPro camera mounted to your helmet so to do that you've got a much more complexity you've got to rig up a, a lavalier mic perhaps inside the helmet or some other audio recording device this is an all-in-one run and gun solution for doing motovlogging. So it connects to the microphone inside the helmet. You can use it as a two-way communicator. You can do it for vlogging. It's all built in and that's a very, very uh, valuable uh, pro, you might say, or, or good feature. Also, it pairs very easily using the Cine technology. It pairs very, very easily to a smartphone. So I'm showing it in my videos, I show an example of pairing it to a Goldwing or to the BMW or to perhaps an Indian or whatever that has an audio system. But remember, it doesn't treat that any differently than if you paired it to a smartphone. It's just looking at it as an audio system that you're connecting to Bluetooth. Same thing with making phone calls or receiving phone calls. It's very seamless and very elegant the way that Senna has designed this to communicate with a smartphone. And it has all the voice commands. Another big plus is you can you don't have to take your hand off of the handlebars to hit buttons. For most functions, you can say, Hey, Senna, or Hey, Sina, depending on how you want to pronounce it. I think it works either way. And you can uh, control this communicator camera, like increase volume, turn the volume up, turn the volume down, mute. You can, uh, hey, Cena, uh, call Joe, or whatever. You can do all kinds of things with voice commands. I wish the Goldwing's audio system worked that way. So it's very elegant the way it uses the voice commands. And I found the voice commands to be pretty reliable.
You can even start and stop recording uh, using voice commands. Now, one big plus is it's a huge value that you've got a communicator and a camera all in one unit for the same price. You're not having to purchase a three or four hundred dollar communicator and a four or five hundred dollar GoPro. You know, the newest GoPro is going to be about four or five hundred dollars by itself. And then you've got the cost of a communicator. So this is all in one package for one price. I think this retails on their website. The last time I checked, I believe it was $549. And by the way, if you're interested in the 50C, I have all the links in the description of this video where you can order this through Amazon, or of course you can check the Santa website. Probably the biggest advantage of this 50C is it's the easiest solution for recording audio on group rides. So if you ride with other people that are using Senna uh, mesh systems or even if the Bluetooth, it, anything coming through the speakers of your helmet through this system will get recorded audio. There's no easier way to do that with a GoPro. You can do it. Uh, I've seen it done. I've seen Don do it on his bike. This is the easiest way. If you want to record group rides, this is the easiest way to do it, hands down. The loop recording feature of this camera is often overlooked, and it's a really powerful feature. Because what it does, when you put it into loop recording mode, you can think of this sort of like a dash cam or a, you know, that's on your helmet, of course. But basically, it's recording everything, and it records everything in three-minute segments. So it, when you look at your SD card at the end of the day, you're going to have all these different files time-coded in three-minute increments. So every three minutes, you get a whole new file. And when you have it in loop recording, it's very intelligent. What it does is when your card fills up and you've got no more space on your SD card, it goes to the oldest file, removes it, and replaces it with the newest file that it's currently recording. So that way, if your card will, say, hold three hours of video, you'll always have your most recent three hours of video. And it depends on the size of your SD card as to how much it will hold. And it also depends on the resolution. If you're shooting in 4K, it, your files are going to be bigger than they would be if you're shooting 1080p obviously. So I know another feature of this is it will run on shore power, so you can put your USB-C cable in here connected, say, to a USB port on your Goldwing or on your motorcycle, whatever motorcycle it is, or it could be a separate battery source. And you can basically record indefinitely. I love the fact that this now uses USB-C for charging for faster charging, and of course when you're connected to uh, an external power source or your motorcycle, uh, you can run indefinitely on the USB-C power. Another really great feature of this camera is very, very clear audio recording. I found that the boom mic that comes with this does an excellent job of getting out, getting, getting rid of the wind noise. Even better than my GoPro lavalier mic, which I have a, a nice uh, protector on there to kind of manage the wind noise, this microphone does a much better job and you get extremely clear audio. But with everything, there are downsides, there are some cons, there are some things that I'm not crazy about with this uh, 50C. So let me go through those real quick, and then at the end I'm going to tell you who I think this is a really good fit for. One thing I'm not crazy about is that it records all of the audio on both channels. So it does have stereo recording, so it, it does have a left and right channel. But when you're on a group ride, or it could just be one other person, or it could be your passenger, it doesn't matter. When you're both talking, it's recording your voice and the other voices, or whatever the other audio source is, all on both channels. So if, when you're on a group ride, sometimes the group coming through your speakers, coming through the sound system, is much uh, lighter or doesn't have the volume that your voice does. You, it's hard to adjust that in post when you're editing. 
I wish that Senna would offer an option in the firmware or in the software, actually, uh, where you could choose to have your voice on one channel and all the other audio coming through on the on the right channel or the left channel, you could pick which channel you want to put it on. And then when you're in editing, you could raise the level of your voice or lower the level of your voice. You could even out the audio better. And that could just be an option uh, in the firmware or in the app that you could set. Do you want everything on one channel? Or, or everything on two channels, or do you want your voice separated in one channel and the other audio in another channel? That, that would be a, a big, big benefit for people that are serious editors. The other thing I'm not crazy about is there's little or no image stabilization, so you get a lot of very shaky video. Now, I mentioned in the video that you can you can edit, you can deal with some of that in post if you're an editor. If you're a, you know, if you know Final Cut Pro or you know uh, DaVinci or some of these other, they have ways that you can stabilize those images, uh, but you lose resolution when you do that. If you're shooting in 4K and you're producing a 1080p video, then yes, you've got some room to play with. But uh, I just wish it had better image stabilization in the camera. Also, the colors coming out of the camera, I think, are a little muted and kind of washed out. Not a lot of dynamic range on the camera. I would like to see Senna come out with a better mounting system. I like the little gear mount. It does allow you to adjust the, uh, the rotation of the camera, and it also allows you to adjust the lens where you can, uh, the, the horizon basically of the lens, but there's no way to adjust for this right here, this back and forth. So you're able to adjust this axis, you're able to adjust this axis, but you're not able to adjust this axis. That would be a nice solution. A little bit more mounting options, but they do give you quite a few mounting, a lot of mounting hardware in the kit, but you can only adjust on those two axes. One thing that really bothers me is there's no way to really effectively use this on some of the newer HJC helmets like the i90. And that's because on the newer HJC helmets, they've put the sunshade control right here on the side of the helmet where you would normally mount this camera. If you want to use an external communicator like the 50C or the even the 50S, it has to mount way back, you know, toward the back of the helmet, so your camera would be pointing way out here. It, it's not going to get straight ahead. So I'm not sure if Senna is going to come up with a way. Again, another mounting solution might be a, a, a fix for that, but there's really no way to use this on some of these newer HJC helmets. I'd really like to see 4K 60 recording. Uh, 60 frames per second. Uh, right now, all you can do in 4K is 30 frames per second. And I was kind of hoping with this new camera, uh, basically the specs are identical to the 10C Evo. So I was, I was kind of hoping that we would get 4K 60 in this new camera, but uh, not this time. The only other real negative I can think of as far as this product goes is it's only a helmet cam. It's, I mean, it is a Bluetooth communicator and a great mesh Bluetooth communicator. But for the standpoint of a camera, all it is is for motor vlogging on your helmet. Whereas a GoPro, you know, you can put it on a tripod, you can put it on a selfie stick, you could scuba dive with it. This is a multi-purpose type camera, whereas the uh, 50C is strictly helmet, you're going to have a hard time putting this on a tripod and getting audio into it because there's no mic jack on here. So you pretty much have to use the microphone, the boom mic, or the other mic that comes with this system. So that's uh, it's a single purpose product. Now, those are all my negatives. Who do I think this is good for? I think if you don't have a Bluetooth communicator but you need one, you're going to get a Bluetooth communicator anyway, and you want to do motor vlogging, this is, your, this is your solution. If you want something simple that's much, much easier than a GoPro setup on your helmet, 
uh, this is the way to go. It's very. This is a run and gun solution. You basically mount it. You've got your Bluetooth communicator. You can listen to music on your phone. You can record video. You could put it in loop recording, use it like a dash cam, so it's always recording everything. Another cool feature that I would like to see Senna do is come out with one of these that has a camera in the front and a camera in the back. Then you would have like a real true dash cam where you're recording everything in front of you, everything behind you. That would be pretty cool. So uh, that's just for the future thought process for Senna if you're, if you're listening. Other than that... Uh, it's a good camera. It's a good product. It's a great, it's a better communicator than it is a camera. That's kind of, I'd say it's 80% communicator, 20% camera, whereas a GoPro is 100% camera. It has no communication capability. But it's still a good camera. So if you've used the Cine 50C, I'd like you to put your comments down below. Do you agree with me? Disagree? What are your comments? What are your thoughts? Uh, what has your experience been in using this product? And if you have any other questions or comments about this review, please put them in the comments down below. I didn't show everything. I didn't show the app. I didn't show all the pairing. Uh, there's a lot of videos on YouTube that get into that. Maybe I'll do another video where I show how to pair it uh, to a motorcycle and to a smartphone and use it for that purpose. But I was basically trying to focus more on the camera aspects of this as opposed to the communicator aspects. I am very pleased with it. It is a product I will use again in the future. And uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Hey, if you liked this video, please take a second, click that thumbs up. It really does help out the channel. And I will look forward to seeing you on the next Cruise Man's Reviews.